One of the things that I definitely have noticed is teriyaki salmon at a Japanese restaurant tends to be a very friendly way for people to get interested in fish. Only today, I'm not using salmon. I'm really excited to teach you about this fish called Arctic char, which actually looks like salmon. And it's actually a cousin of salmon. It's a cousin because it's related to salmon and trout. It's both saltwater and freshwater fish. And it's a wonderful, wonderful choice right now to buy Arctic char. It's a sustainable fish. And by that, I mean you should pay attention when you're actually using a recipe to think about what the fish is. If it says salmon teriyaki and it's not salmon season or you can't get good salmon, don't be afraid to just use Arctic char. And that's the way you think about it, but then use my technique that I'm showing you here. So the first thing I'm doing is just salting this and getting some pepper on it just to season up the fish. It's um, really, really, really beautiful, clean, delicate flavor. And that's the thing. If you're interested in really learning about what I mean by sustainable fish, you can go on the computer and just search sustainable fish where you can learn about, in your area of the country, what fish is in season, what fish is sustainable. By sustainable, I mean some fish has been overfished, sadly. And so we need to let those populations regenerate. So anyway, Arctic char, check it out. It's an excellent, excellent eating fish. So. Aside from choosing the right fish, not being afraid or intimidated to cook fish is the next step because too many of us are concerned about how to do it at home. So I'm heating my nonstick skillet. Now I cook fish in a nonstick skillet, but I also like to cook in cast iron. You know, I'm always talking about cast iron, but it can have shaky results if you're not familiar with it. So if you're loving fish and you want to cook fish, invest in a really good nonstick skillet. And that'll just ensure you're going to have success. And I learned that from a very, very, very well-known fish chef. And he assured me that that's the best way for people to have success. So I have four tablespoons of soy sauce because I'm in my Japanese restaurant restaurant mode here, four teaspoons of honey, just give or take. I have a very, very simple sauce here that is, again, attractive. I keep going back to the kids because, you know, you got to train them early to eat fish and it's such a wonderful food source. And those of us who aren't used to fish need to figure out ways to cook it so that it's yummy and it's easy to cook and people who are eating with you want to eat it. And then one teaspoon of sesame oil and that's it. Now you'll notice I'm picking up some of the seasoning here that I have in my oshitashi or my spinach salad. And I like to do that also because once you have your pantry stocked with some ingredients that you can use to recreate some of these restaurant ideas, then you're good to go in so many recipes. All right, this should be very, very, very hot. Now, first thing I'm going to do is just about half of my uh, sauce here, I'm just putting on top of the fish. And I'm going to go skin side up. So I'm making sure that I have some of the sauce before I even get into the pan. And you might say, uh, or be thinking to yourself, is this one of those seared crispy skin fish dishes, which it could be, but that's not what I'm doing here. And I have a reason for that. And that is because I do notice that some people who are a little shy about fish, they actually don't love the skin so much. So this is a great way to be able to get the skin off easily, and I'll show you that later. So a very, very hot pan, and I mean really hot, a little bit of oil, not too much, and this goes skin side up. Right away you start to hear that really, really good sizzle, and that's what you want. And I can tell you this right now, this fish does not smell like fish. It smells amazing. It smells like the sea, and now that it has the sauce in it, it's starting to smell that yummy, Japanese-y, teriyaki kind of scent. And people say that a lot to me. They'll say, my house smells like fish. What do I do about it? Well, buy better fish, I'm sorry to say, and choose your recipes wisely. This is another reason why some people don't like to cook on top of the stove. But I think it's fine, absolutely fine. So this is cooking very fast. So now I'm turning it over. And I'm taking the rest of my sauce here and just pouring it into the pan. And that's gonna do two things. It's gonna really, really flavor and reduce into a lovely little sauce, but it's also gonna help me. I'm just get this burner down a little bit. With that honey, it's gonna caramelize. It's gonna help me get the fish off without any stickage whatsoever. And then I'm gonna have a nice little glaze for the fish when I'm done. So you just cook it down until your fish is cooked. This is another fish you really, really, really do not wanna overcook. 
and I am gonna just touch it. See, that's great. You know, your finger should not go down, it should be resistant. Now I'll turn these over, give them a few more minutes to cook. So we can see that it's cooked. I touch it like this and it barely resists. I don't want it dry. That's another cardinal bummer of fish cooking. You do not want it dry. But look at that caramelized color. That's from the honey. And it brings out that uh, just extra special kind of sweet and salty and savory flavor.